For four centuries, Vikings held sway over parts of Russia, Belarus, and Ukraine, with the greatest expansion happening under Prince Oleg the Prophet. The historical people known as Vikings, who hailed from Scandinavia in Northern Europe, are well known today for their exploits in the West. But the merchant warriors also made their way into Eastern Europe, where they helped found a medieval federation and territory now known as Belarus, Ukraine, and part of Russia. Their loose federation of principalities, called Kivan Rus, survived for nearly 400 years, finally collapsing during the 13th century Mongol invasion. If you like historical stories, please like and subscribe to my channel to watch new videos. Early Scandinavian Settlements in the East Vikings founded Kivan Rus in the mid-9th century, but Scandinavian settlements in Eastern Europe actually date back to at least AD 750. This is when pre-Viking Age Scandinavians likely settled the northwestern Russian town of Staria Ladiga or Old Ladiga, across Lake Ladiga from what is now Finland. One of the artifacts archaeologists have unearthed from the city is a talisman with the face of Odin, the Norse god of war. The early Scandinavians were particularly attracted to Ladiga by the appearance of Islamic silver coins or dirhams there, writes scholar Thomas S. Noonan. The regular flow of Islamic dirhams from Russia to Scandinavia via Ladiga began in the early 9th century and is further evidence of a Viking presence in Ladiga long before 840. Prince Oleg expands territory, moves the capital to Kiev. It was after 840 that Scandinavian Vikings, who were known in Eastern Europe as Varangians or Rus, established Viking rule over Slavic tribes in what came to be called Kivan Rus. At first, the region was divided between three noble brothers. The oldest, Rurik, located himself at Novgorod, the second, Sinius, at Belozero, and the third, Truvor, in Izborsk, recounts the Russian primary chronicle a history of the region completed in the 12th century by Kivan monks. On account of these Varangians, the district of Novgorod became known as the land of Rus. Rus, which is where the name Russia comes from, purportedly derives from an old Nordic word for men who row. Rurik's brothers died within two years, so he claimed their territory and established Novgorod as the capital of his domain. After Rurik died, his successor, Prince Oleg of Novgorod, or Oleg the Prophet, captured the city of Kiev in 882 and moved the capital from Novgorod to Kiev. In addition to capturing new territories to increase the size of Kivan Rus, Oleg also increased its wealth by negotiating a favorable trade deal with Constantinople, the capital of the Byzantine Empire. Royal Pains After Oleg Archaeological discoveries in the region support the Russian Primary Chronicle's historical account of Vikings in the region, at least in part. However, historians caution readers to approach the chronicle narrative with a grain of salt, since some of its stories have an exaggerated, mythical quality. One such story, how Oleg allegedly died, according to the chronicle, a prophecy during his lifetime foretold that one of his horses would cause his death. To avoid his fate, Oleg never rode that horse, but after he successfully expanded Kivan Rus' territory and trade, he got a little cocky and began to wonder if he could ride the horse after all. By then, the animal had died, so Oleg found its bones and mockingly stomped on its skull. But the story goes, a serpent slithered from underneath and bit Oleg, killing him. After Oleg came a period of royal distress. His successor was Rurik's son, Igor of Kiev, who married a woman named Olga. Like Oleg, Igor collected tribute from the people he had conquered. But unlike Oleg, his prices were so high that they prompted a tribe to assassinate him. When he died, his wife Olga assumed power. What reportedly happened next with Olga is one of those stories that likely lives more on the mythical end of the spectrum. Olga was, understandably, furious with the early Slavic tribe of Drevlians that had killed her husband. So when Drevlian emissaries went to see Olga to discuss whether she would marry one of their princes, she supposedly tricked them into being buried alive. 
The Chronicle also says she invited a bunch of Drevlian wise men to visit her and then burned them alive inside a bathhouse. End of the Kivan Rus era. Kivan Rus was largely pagan until the late 10th century when Vladimir the Great took power and introduced Christianity. The conversion actually resulted from a deal between Vladimir and the Byzantine Emperor. Vladimir agreed to convert to Christianity and send the emperor 6,000 soldiers to defend his throne. In exchange, Vladimir would marry the emperor's sister. The exchange of soldiers led to the establishment of the Varangian Guard, an elite unit of imperial bodyguards. In addition, the deal led to the spread of Byzantine culture within Kievan Rus. Vladimir built churches to spread Christianity and schools to spread literacy, and also probably Christianity. The economy flourished and Kivan Rus continued to expand. This cultural and economic growth likely peaked under the rule of Vladimir's son, Yaroslav I, or Yaroslav the Wise, who began construction of St. Sophia Cathedral in Novgorod. After this, the Kivan Rus Federation was beset by royal fights for power. The Crusades brought further instability, so that by the time the Mongols invaded in the 13th century, Kivan Rus was weak and divided and easily fell.